Now let's talk about the T34 76mm gun, the F34. It was a very good gun, a lot of penetration and everything, and also a good high explosive charge, but there was a major issue with it in 1941. Now Glantz notes that guns back then for the tanks were often not bore sided. So this means that the sight was not as uh, aligned with the, with the barrel properly. So your aim was a bit off. Yet the issue I want to talk about is not with the gun itself, but more with its lack of ammunition and the general understanding behind this. Now, generally, usually when the war breaks out, there's always um, quite often a munition crisis for the First and the Second World War. I talked about the, in the First World War in my video about artillery tactics in World War I, and also Germany also had a munition crisis in 1940. But in this case, it's more severe. So there was a general lack of readiness of the Red Army in 1941, something I covered in another video as well. But for ammunition, it was a whole different issue. So the pre-war production for this, for this gun, for this ammo, started late. So in 1939 already, the output was too low. Then there were many issues with quality. So like in May 1941, only 15% of the required numbers were put out because quite often the, the ammo was rejected for quality reasons. And sometimes the 15% now was even less for some factories. This led to certain situations in summer 1941. For instance, the 7th tank division is noted it had zero shots for the T-34 and the KV tanks. Now, as you can see, you have already a major problem in the pre-war situation. Now the war starts and the Germans overrun a large part of Soviet Russia. And the three main factories were Stalino, which was evacuated beyond the Urals because it was then conquered. Then there was Leningrad, which was encircled by the Germans and then there was the third one was in Moscow and it was still in a conversion state in 1941. So mass production didn't start before December 1941. As you can see, there was a minor amount of stock available and then basically the production in 1941 couldn't get going because encirclements overrun, evacuated or still converting. Additionally, there was a general a large amount of ammo lost during the retreat. And there are about 300 pre-war sites that were lost for ammunition production or related aspects and in total about 80% of the whole industry was on wheels according to some authors. Now why is this important? Well, in my video where I compare the T-34 and the Panzer III, I don't account for the lack of ammunition for certain reasons to, to keep the video a bit more focused on the tactical, technical side, so more on the if the tank would more or less operate in an ideal environment, but still considering production issues like bad steel and other aspects, which are often forgotten. And so the general effectiveness on the battlefield of the T-34 was extremely limited due to this lack of ammunition. Often they could only use the machine gun. And this also shows why sometimes there was more ramming involved. I mean, there are pictures of a T-34 overrunning a, a Panzer II or something. Also, if you want to learn more about the T-34, be sure to check out my video on it, where also Chifton is featured and explains some aspects because he was in the Panzer III and also in the T-34, so he, he knows how they feel. Big thank you here to Czech and Bodo, who both provided me books that I could use for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.